Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Flexi webinar. My name is Bennett. I'll be the moderator for today. Our presenters are Jason Stone and Bobby Cagle. They're some of our sales managers at SAI and also some of our Flexi experts. Today, they'll be showing us what you need to know about working with White in Flexi. After the presentation, we'll be able to answer any questions you have either about white workflows or any other flexi topic. So feel free to put those questions in the chat and we'll answer as many as we can. We are recording the webinar as always. So if you want to review anything that's discussed or share it with someone else, we'll be sending you all the link this afternoon. So look out for that. And that's about it for me. So I'll turn it over to these guys. Yeah, hello, everybody. Thank you for taking time out of your busy days to log on to another Flexi uh, webinar here. Uh, me and Bobby are sales reps for SAI, and uh, we both have been in this industry a long time. I would imagine between the two of us, we have a good 50 years in this industry working in different aspects of it. My family owned a Sinorama shine shop in Salt Lake City, Utah. So uh, I used Flexi some 20 years ago, uh, cutting vinyl and sticking it to everything. So digital printing is awesome. I wish I had printers that uh, could print white back when I had my sign shop. Um, I've also worked in tech support, supporting all sorts of printers, Roland, HP, cutters like GraphTech, uh, Gerber equipment, and uh, so me and Bobby have both been in this a, a long time. Bobby's worked for a national reseller of sign equipment and knows Flexi um, very intimately. He always shows me things that I didn't know Flexi could do, which is pretty cool with these webinars because um, I actually learned a couple things about Flexi I didn't know um, that I'm going to present here that I'm pretty excited about. So we're going to jump into it here. On my screen, I've got Flexi, um, which is our design side application up on the screen. And uh, I always like to show in these webinars, um, a lot of you probably have Flexi and have used it for a long time. Over on the right, we have our cloud page, which I love. It has a great, a lot of great knowledge on there. We have a knowledge base. You can get your profiles here. You can access our YouTube channel, which will have this webinar on it and other past webinars. Um, this is a great link, but the first thing I always like to do in Flexi is turn that off to give me more design space. So this button right up here, we click that and can turn that off and on. Then I like to move my Design Central and my Fill Stroke Editor over there. So before we get started, um, you'll hear Bobby uh, chime in on things um, either that maybe I missed a step or something here or um, maybe uh, a, a little comment on there. The nice thing about Flexi, um, I guess nice thing and kind of negative about Flexi is there's several ways to do things in here. So I may do things one way, Bobby may do things another way, and you may have another way to do things. So some of the things in here that I'm going to show you um, kind of accomplish the same thing, but are different ways to work with white. Um, so let's jump into it here. I'm if gonna... anybody's got any comments or questions while you're going along, go ahead and put them into the, um, the chat and uh, I'll interrupt Jason and ask him the questions uh, as I see them come in. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, you put them in the chat there and we'll take breaks and answer questions here. Uh, these webinars, uh, I think are more beneficial if you ask questions and uh, test me and Bobby's knowledge here. So definitely put those in here. So um, I've got this image and just a little plug real quick. Um, if you have a Flexi subscription, um, there is a product that we have access to called Sign Design Elements. And I pulled up this baseball off of Sign Design Elements, uh, which has a lot of cool clip art. Um, so this is just a vector graphic here. And the easiest workflow for white, um, in my opinion, is working within Flexi and sending it over to print through Production Manager. We're going to get into a little bit working with other design programs. I'll show you 
uh, ways to create files in Illustrator and Corel Draw. I'm not actually going to show you how to create the files in there, but show you what you can do in those programs to bring those files into Flexi to work for White. So um, with Flexi 22, we have integrated some options in here where all you need is a file, a printer that prints white, and you're going to go into, um, we're going to hit print, go into production manager and generate our white channel here. So this graphic, simple vector graphic. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to my rip and print window. Before we jump into it, I should mention too that um, in my examples, I have loaded an HP 800W printer, which is their new printer that prints white. And then I've also got a Roland LEC printer, which has white and a gloss channel in it. So I'm going to go over creating two different channels above and beyond the white. Um, there are also other printers out there, such as Mamaki, um, that print white. And uh, once you get into production manager, some of those driver options will be a little bit different in there. So we're going to go ahead and hit the rip and print button here. Um, up here, I've got my printers. I'm going to select my HP. We're going to work with that first. And we're simply going to send this file over from the rip and print window. So I hit send. And my, uh, my friend Bobby, he showed me this forever. I would go to my production manager and click that. And I didn't realize there was a little button right here that I can click and go right to production manager which I think is pretty cool. So production manager here, you see I've got my HP printer, my Roland printer, and we've dropped this file into my HP queue. If I double click on this file in Flexi 22, we added this awesome tab right here. This is our transparency tab. This is the absolute easiest way to generate a white channel for these printers. Um, we click on this tab, Again, this file has no white channel generated in it. And I can simply uh, click this button right here, create transparent background. And then you'll see my, my cursor, when I hang it over here, it turns into an eyedropper. If I uh, click my mouse button, it knocks out that background. There's a couple things I can do here to select the rest of the white. Um, basically, um, we're creating a transparent background and then creating the white based off of that. So there's a button right here, uh, select similar areas. If I select this, it's gonna knock out all my white. So if I wanted solid white around this baseball, you can see it knocked out in the gray here. This is not gonna print white. So this isn't the effect we wanted, but I wanted to show you this button. We can hit the reset button. I'm gonna go back and we're gonna do this again. Um, the other thing that we I'm gonna note here is this tolerance button, this determines uh, the tolerance around the edge of the graphic here. I'm going to bump this up to about 35 here. Um, and then I've got my button clicked. If I click on this corner right here, you can't see it, but I'm going to hold down the shift key and I can select these other four corners. And now I've created a transparent background around this image. Down here at the bottom, we're going to come back to the middle here. But down at the bottom here, what we're saying here is that our white channel, we want to create the white option based on the transparency mask that I just created. I'm going to show you later in the webinar how to import a PNG with a transparent background. Um, another workflow, but we're going to work on this right now. Another cool tab on here is this tab right here. And this is our channel preview. If I click on this, it shows my image here, and if I select the button here to preview my output channels, I'm going to deselect this, and I just want to see my white. So now you can see that I've created my white channel based on this transparent background that I created. You can also come in here and see your CMYK values. So you see I've got my image on there. So this is a nice preview to make sure that my white is going to print how I want it before I send it over. So two great tools, my output preview channel and my transparency tab here. So now that we've created that, that's the easiest way to create white and flexi. Um, just a few clicks. Uh, some other things I wanted to go over is down here, 
when we create our white channel, we selected use this transparency mask. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to unselect this. I'm going to reset this. I'm going to unselect this. I've got different ways I can create white down here too. This webinar is really kind of based on printers, large format printers for signing graphics. But um, this tab down here is really useful if you are printing uh, DTF, which is a new process out for printing on film and transferring that ink over. And sometimes you don't want solid white under here, but maybe you want a lot of white underneath light colors like this light gray, this gray and this red, and just a little white under the black. So down here we have a few options. The first one I used was use transparency mask. Um, the next option I have here is solid under. So if I select this and go to my preview here, you can see that it is putting solid white um, where it's black, it's gonna print white. And you can see if I go back to my image here, it's putting white underneath solid colors on here. So you see it doesn't put white under white here. That's where using this create transparent background really comes in. Um, so that's solid under. The next one under, uh, the next one here is variable under. So this is going to put varying amounts of white underneath our image. So you can see here that um, under black, it's putting a lot of white. And under some of my lighter colors, it's putting less white on there. One thing I did forget to mention, if we go back here, I'm going to jump back to my transparency mask. If I created this here and I didn't want to put 100% white underneath this, we do have a slider bar here. So if I wanted to go down to 75% white, if I go to my preview channel here, you can see it's a lighter gray, so it's going to put less white under there. Sorry to jump around. I just noticed that. We're going to jump back here. We're going to reset this. We're going to go back. We did variable under. Inverted variable under is going to do the opposite of variable under. So if I select this, come in here to my white, you can see that it puts um, no white under colors like black and then more white underneath uh, some colors on here. Our other options on here, spot color. I'm going to get into this a little bit later in the webinar. Um, if you want the ultimate control of your white, you can create a white um, in your design and then you name that a spot color and you're going to manage it. So here we're telling it to use that spot color in your design. We'll go over that in a minute as well, along with this driver setting here. So I'm going to get into that a little bit later into the webinar here. So the easiest way to create white is to have a design in Flexi uh, without any white in it. Hit your rip and print and manage it through this transparency tab right there. Super simple. Um, so the next way we're going to get into it, this one I'm pretty excited to show because I didn't, I've never used this in Flexi before, and I'm kind of excited about this. It works really cool. So same image here, but what we're going to do is we're going to create the white actually in the design here. So I'm going to select the image. Under effects, we have this under base option. So I'm going to show it to you in here. I'm going to break it out, show you how it creates it with the solid under base and the variable under base, and then we're going to print it. So if I select solid under base over on Design Central here, this is the brains of Flexi. Flexi is pretty cool. So every it, it's Flexi, so it's one program, but really Flexi is the collection of a lot of different programs. So Design Central is the brains. Anything I pick, Design Central is going to show all the options for that. So with my under base, this is really cool. I can do a bleed, which is this radial button, or I can choke this channel here. So I'm going to bleed it just a little bit to show you kind of here. If you wanted to do zero or a little bit of a bleed, that works. But I'm going to do a uh, bleed to show you how this works. Um, you can select it with holes or without holes, and you can uh, select your corner type here. If I select that, I could do clip corners, 90-degree uh, corners. I like rounded corners, especially on an image like this. 
and then you can select your under base. I'm going to get into spot channels here in a minute. Um, that default, it's going to select under base on here. I've already got a spot channel called white, so I'm going to use that. And when I hit apply, you can kind of see my under base here. I did a bleed so that you can see it here. If I, I'm going to separate and just show you how this works. If I go to effects now and separate the under base, what this has done is it actually created a solid under base of white, which is going to use for our white channel here. So I'm going to go back, put it on here. I've got my under base on here. So this is really cool. If I hit my rip and print button here now, um, a couple things we have to do when we do it this way, when I've got it in here, here's where I can do my sizing. I can put multiple copies and everything on here. So if I wanted to fill this up with a bunch of copies, I'm going to put my copies in here. But the important thing is this button right here. A couple things that we need to pay attention here. And I'm going to refer to my HP printer at this point. This is different from printer to printer. But with the HP 700 and 800W, your profile determines how it's going to put down white. So when I designed it here, it's showing the white behind it. But if I actually come in here with this printer, there's different options. There's WOF on this profile, which stands for white over flood. So that's going to put white over the image. There's white under flood. That's going to put it under the image. And then sandwich mode, we're going to get into that a little bit later. That's for printing color, white color. But on this one, we're going to select under flood. And then an important thing when doing it this way is we need to click this button right here. This ignore over print. If I don't click this, what's going to happen is it's only going to print this little sliver of white here because when we um, create this under base, it selects the rest of the image and it tells it we want to overprint that ink over the white. So in here, we select ignore over print. And then this is important right here too. We, we're going to select use printer spot colors. So if I select this and then my mapping button, this is the color I have designed in my design. It's a spot color called white and it's mapping it to the white channel of the printer. So you want to take note right here because uh, different printers will call their white spot channel something different. It could be something like spot underscore one um, or different things. If you're familiar with printing and cutting, you already know cut contour with capital C's. So this spot color for this printer is the same. It's white with a capital W. We're gonna get in here a little bit later and show you how to map uh, a, a different color to your, your white or your gloss. So we're gonna get into that. So I hit okay here. And then I'm going to hit the send button. Again, thanks to my friend Bobby, I'm going to hit my production manager button here. And it drops my images into production manager. I like this because it's kind of cool. It shows a transparent green for our white. If we double click on this, you can see I've got my white on here. I can come in here to my white channel. And there's my white on there. So this way we don't have to come into the transparency tab. We actually generated the white in the design. So super cool. Um, another thing that we can do here, I'm gonna take this same image and go back to design. Um, and this time, if we wanted to do a print and cut decal, all I have to do is go to effects, contour cut, on Design Central, I can specify how I want my contour cut. We're gonna put it an eighth of an inch away here. I select that. We're gonna do the same process here. My copies have changed a little bit. I'm gonna go down to 12 on here. On this example, we've got an HP latex cutter. It puts the barcode in here. Um, so now I've got my white. Again, we're gonna come in here Make sure this ignore overprint is selected. We're gonna map our spot colors here. Everything looks awesome, white to white. Okay, we're gonna hit send. My production manager, 
So now I've got print and cut decals with a white under here. I can come in here. I can check my white. There it is. And we have just created a print and cut decal. So super easy. I've just shown you two ways to generate white. Um, I think both of them are pretty easy. Go ahead, Bobby. Jason, if you wanted to put, if you were printing on clear and you wanted white behind that barcode, is that an option? No, nope, that's a good question. So I'm going to send this again. I jumped ahead of myself, deleted that file out of here. Um, I'm going to go over here. Well, actually, we can come in here. Go to my cut tab right here. And these are my options for my, my registration marks right here. So we have designated an HP latex cutter. I've got my barcode selected here. I can select my options right here. And here's my add white background. So like Bobby said, if I was printing on clear material and I wanna put white behind the barcode and my registration marks here, I select the add white background right there. And I've got that on there. That was a great question, Bobby. Um, this is an HP latex cutter. The same thing happens. I don't have a graph tech on here, but if you have a graph tech, um, the same options here, the graph tech registration marks will show up. You hit the options and there's a button for white underneath the, the barcode on that, as well as those registration marks. So I am going to open this file again. Um, there was one thing that I didn't mention on our first example. So if I go back to my baseball logo here, oops, open up this baseball logo. There we go. So I'm going to send it over to my HP here. Um, so I'm going to send this. I'm going to go to production manager one thing I, I forgot to show you that is super cool on this tab right here so this file has no white in it when we create the transparent background here once i select this this generates my white so i've got my white right there and we added this other cool feature in here so this uh, design didn't have a cut line on it either We've created the option in 22. If I select create contour cuts here, um, you can kind of see the yellow line here. I can select my offset here and you can see that now I'm giving it a, just about a quarter inch offset on my cut line here. So now I've created um, a file that had no white in the design, no cut line, and we did all that in production manager. So um, the other reason I wanted to show you this is, for example, if you aren't using Flexi Design and you bring in a PDF, an EPS, uh, any type of file into Production Manager and it doesn't have white, doesn't have a cut line, you can do all that right within Production Manager. So super cool feature right here on that transparency tab. All right, so. Now we've gone over ways to do everything in Flexi. I think those are the easiest ways to do everything. Um, now I'm going to jump in here. And we're hey, gonna yeah, go ahead, Bobby. How did you create that spot white color? No, oh, okay. Great question. So um, you made it green. How did, how did we do that? Yeah. So um, again, this depends on your printer. Uh, with these HP printers, the spot color used to generate white is actually a spot color called white. So to create that, there's actually a couple ways to do it here. Um, one way uh, to do it is to create a box, any shape, and then we can take any of these colors down in our color palette if you want to. For whatever reason, I like to use fluorescent green for my spot color. So if I come down here and just select one of these greens here, um, then I can go up to my color specs tab right here. If I select on this, I can change this right here to a spot color. It has to be a spot color. It can't be an RGB color or CMY color named white. We're gonna name it white. And this is pretty important. It actually has to have the W, capital W, lowercase h-i-t-e like i said some other printers may use a uh, spot underscore one 
or something else for the name. And then if I hit new here, you can see down in my color palette, it generates a new spot color. I already had a spot color in here called white, so it named it white too. Actually, I had a couple others in there. So that's one way to do it here. And then it's got in my color palette down here. Another thing, me and Bobby were going over this earlier today. If you wanted to have this spot color in a separate color palette, you can right click on your color palette, go to new table here, and maybe you wanna drag this spot color into my new palette here. So I've got my palette with my spot color here. The other thing that we're going to do in this example is we're actually going to we're going to generate white underneath this graphic. And this time I've got a Roland printer, a UV printer that has gloss white in it. And so what I'm going to do in this example is I'm going to print white under the baseball. And then for these red seams, I'm going to put uh, gloss in here to give it a little bit of a texture. So to do that, we're going to create a couple different channels. So we're going to use a spot color called white and then another one called gloss. So this time I've got my image here. We're going to select it and we're going to do what we did earlier. We're going to go to effects and underbase and solid underbase. I forgot to show you a variable underbase here too. Um, let's do that real quick. So variable underbase. If I select this uh, and give it a little bit of a bleed here, I'm gonna select my white on here, hit apply. And then if I come in here to effects and separate the variable under base, if I select this, you can see it's generated different variations of white underneath it here. So in this under base option, you've got the, those two different options here. I'm going to reopen this file just to make sure everything goes right in my demo. So far, everything's going great. Usually when you do demos like this, you practice uh, for a couple days before, an hour or two before, and something doesn't go like it should. So I probably just jinxed myself here, but let's see how it goes. So we're going to come in here. We're going to go to Effects and Under Base. We're going to do a solid Under Base. Again, I'm going to give it a bleed just because I want to kind of show it here a little bit. It's got my bleed. I've got my white here. And I click my check mark. So now I'm going to select my seams in here. If I select this, it's all grouped right here. And I'm trying to select just the seams. If I right click on here and go to select within, then I can select. I'm going to select any of the red here. So I'm going to select this red right here. And I want to select everything else. So if I right click, go to select and select similar, similar color, it selects all my red. Now we don't want to put texture in the eye and the tongue. I just want to do it on the seams here. Although on the eyes, it'd be pretty cool. If I hold the shift key and select the tongue, the eye here, and this eye, hopefully it deselected those. This time I'm gonna to go to Effects and Finisher, and we're gonna to go to Shape Finisher. So when I select it here, oh, I didn't deselect my eyes, but that's okay. We're gonna give the eyes a little texture here too. I did deselect the tongue, so we're cool. I could come in here on my Roland, the gloss. We wanna use a spot color called gloss, a capital G-L-O-S-S, -S, but I'm gonna leave it on Finisher because I'm gonna show you how we can map it to that gloss if we have something that isn't the exact spot color. So I'm gonna leave it on finisher. You can see it's kind of light over those seams. So my files should be good to go here. So now I'm gonna hit my rip and print window. I've got my Roland LEF printer on here, which has gloss and white in it. So we're gonna do the same procedure here. We're gonna to go to this tab. We've got my ignore overprint is unclicked here. That's good. My use printer spot colors in my mapping on here oh your your finisher isn't showing up yeah yeah let's go back here done let's start this over once more here we're gonna open this file baseball logo i'm gonna go kind of quick here we're gonna go to effects under base solid under base 
We're going to check that. We're going to go to select within, select my color, select by similar color. We're going to select the red. We're going to go to effects and finisher, shape finisher there. I've got my finisher there. Applied it here. So we're going to go to rip and print. I'm keeping my fingers crossed here. We've got ignore overprint, color mapping. Ah, oh, we've got my gloss and white, my mapping. Mm. Ah, where is my finisher? <laughs> See, I jinxed myself. I said that it doesn't always work right and uh, came on there. So, done. Let me try this once more here. I apologize about this, everybody. It did Fire. work earlier. Effects, underbase, solid underbase. We're going to change it to gloss, Jason, and see what it does. That No, not that one. Yeah. So we're going to go to select within, select my red, select my similar colors. We're going to deselect that. We're going to go to effects, finisher, shape finisher. Oh, I know why it is. Oh, let's do this. Okay. So my bad here. I apologize about this. We're going to open this file one last time. I'm pretty sure it's going to work here. This time we are going to create a spot color called white. We'll leave it this gray. I'm going to come in here. We're going to call this spot. We're going to call this gloss. New. OK. Delete. Effects, underbase, solid underbase. There's my white. So now we're going to go to select within. Select my red. We're going to go to select here. Select similar colors. Deselect that tongue here. Effects, finisher, shape finisher. We're going to leave it on the finisher here. Print. Come here. Ignore overprint. Does not like me, Bobby. This is not good here. Don't know what it's doing. Yeah. So when we, um, I was going to show you how to map it here. If it didn't map it to this color, we can actually double, we can change it here. So if we wanted to print this to the gloss, we could select that if it wasn't named right and hit OK here. And it's going to map it to that gloss channel here. Um, so we're going to jump off this one. I, I'm not sure why that didn't work here. We're going to jump to something a little bit different here. So we uh, we showed you those different ways to create that um, within the design. So another easy way to create white in um, this one is super easy. This goes with um, DTF printing. So you can actually, what we're going to do is we're going to open up this file. So this one, for example, we want to print white underneath the baseball, but then we want to print these words white here. So I just created it with red lettering to show you how it's going to work here. And one of the easiest ways to do this, especially if you're doing uh, DTF printing, is we can create a, a PNG file with a transparent background. So if I select this and it works for other printers, you don't have to do it for DTF. This is just an easy way to create white for the letters here. If I select these letters, I'm actually going to make them white. You can't see them in the file here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this as a PNG. If you do that within Flexi, it defaults to suppress options. But we want to uncheck this because when we save it, we want to actually uh, select the resolution and make sure that transparent is selected here. I've already done this, but if I hit OK here, it's going to save that file. And then when I go to Production Manager, so this works um, with Illustrator, uh, Photoshop, Corel Drop. You save files as a PNG with a transparent background. If I go to Add Job here, I have 
uh, a PNG file already created. I added in here. If I double click on it, go to my transparency tab, I don't have to do anything here. All I have to do is this option right here appears when you have a uh, file with a transparent background. If I select use alpha channel for white and go to my preview channel here, you see my letters right there with my baseball and everything on there. So this is another super easy way to generate white if you create files and save them as PNGs with a transparent background on there. So that's another way to do that, another super simple way. So now we're going to get into... A lot of times that'll give you a lot cleaner white. Sometimes uh, when you use the transparency and the, the magic wand tool to make the, the white in the, um, in the production manager, it will sometimes leave a little bit of a fuzzy white edge. And this will give you a much cleaner white when you do it this way. Yeah, so what Bobby's talking about is, is if you do it here, um, you can see that it kind of grabs that pixelation a little bit here. Because even though this was a vector file, um, when it comes into Production Manager, it converts it to a PDF. So it's picking up the, um, the, the rasterization on those, those, those files here. That's what this tolerance is for. The higher you bump up that, the smoother it's going to be there. Um, so like Bobby said, if you do it a PNG, it's going to be a little bit smoother that way. So now we're going to go back to design. I'm showing this in Flexi um, just because I'm not an expert in Illustrator and Photoshop. So we're going to open up this. Oops, I didn't want that one. We're going to go to this file right here. So some other ways that you can create files, and this applies to Illustrator and Corel Draw as well. So if I take this image, um, there's a couple ways I could uh, create this white. I'm going to create a separate white within the file here, very similar to that under uh, under base and finisher did. I'm just going to um, copy this. Oh, where's my copy? I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it. I've got my whole image here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to weld all this. And then I'm going to give it my spot color called white here. I'm going to arrange, go to order. I'm going to send it to the very back so it's behind my file here. And this, this step, this next step is very important. If I just went to print this right now, it's going to print the white, but it's not going to print any white in this area. So what we need to do is we need to select this image here. And there's a couple ways you can do it. I could believe if you go to right click, you can go to overprint and select overprint. You can also go into arrange here and overprint and do it in here. So now I'm going to center all these. And now if I go to print, send it to my HP printer here. Um, we got to make sure that we come in here, make sure that ignore overprint isn't selected. We've got our spot colors on here. And then when I send it over, if I go to production manager here, you can you can tell that it's going to print white by the, the uh, transparent green on there. If I open it, there is my white. So again, another way to create white on here. And you can do that in Illustrator, Corel Draw. They have those overprint commands on there. And you can save it as a PDF, open it up into Production Manager here, and you should be good to go. We're going to come back here. And I'm going to show you one more way. Again, I'm showing you different ways uh, based on your workflow and how you like to do things. Another way that we can do this is we can actually create a layered job in here. Flexi 22 added the ability to work with layered jobs. So this time, same thing here. We've got the same uh, white layer created here, the graphic file. This time, I'm going to open up my layers within Flexi. So it's this button right here. These are my layers. 
You can do this in Illustrator, Corel Draw as well. Um, here's my layers here. So right now in this design, I've only got one layer. This button right here, I'm gonna add a second layer. If you wanted, you can rename these layers. There's a lot of things you can do here. But what I'm gonna do is then I'm gonna come to my object here and you can see if I select this, this is my white. Here's my graphic layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my graphic into layer two here. Um, you can see that um, it put it above here. So I'm gonna center these now. I'm just hitting control five to center it on the page, control five here. So now I've got a file with two layers in it. I've got a white layer and a graphic layer. And next, uh, I'm gonna show you how to do a three layer job uh, and a five layer job. But I'm gonna go over this real quick here. So if I hit print here, I'm gonna send it over to my production manager. So now it's in production manager. If you did this in an Illustrator or Corel Draw, you're gonna go to, you're gonna add the job, you're gonna drop in your PDF or your EPS. Once my job's in here, if we right click it, there's an option down here called split job by layers. If I select that, you can see it's got my layers now. So here I've got layer one is my colors front, layer two is white, so if I hit OK here, it's going to break that job into layers. So now if I double click on this, there's my layers right here on my HP printer. It, it shows the green, my white on front and my graphic on the back. But with an HP printer, if you come in here and print and select a WUF for under flood, it's actually gonna print that. It's gonna print the white first and then the color over that. So that is another way by creating layers in there. Jason, so, uh, yes. hang on before you, before you get rid of that. If you wanted to choke that white back a little bit, how would you do that? Great question. Um, so this button right here is my choke button. If I select this, then I can come in here to my white channel and I can select choke or bleed here. So with a white, you're generally going to bleed it a little bit because if you get even the littlest sliver of white where the print head isn't perfectly aligned with your color, you're going to see that white. So if we hit choke and put uh, like a 0.1 millimeter on there and hit OK, then I can do that on there. So now... I go back in here, I've got that white that's choked out on there. Um, so that's an easy way to choke on there. That was a great question, Bobby. So on here, I can come in here. There's another tab on here where I can see my white and my color layer on here. So I could zoom in a little bit. I can turn these off and on so I can see my graphic and just my white layer there. Um, so that's creating a job with layers. So that was creating a job that had layers in it and then bringing it into Flexi, breaking apart the layers here. Another way we can do this is we can actually import, uh, we're gonna do a, a three layer job here, a sandwich job that's gonna have color, white, and then color. So another way to do this is to actually bring those three different files into production manager and then create a layered job here. So this is three individual files. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to add job here. I'm gonna select these three jobs here and I'm gonna show you this here, but I've got a preset set up that's got some presets for a three layer job. So I can change that preset by selecting here. I'm gonna select my three layer preset and I'm gonna hit add on here. So now you can see I've got three different jobs in production manager here. So I've got a colored layer, a white layer. This is actually a spot color called white. And I've got this tab on here. The reason I wanted to show you this way is uh, for example, if this uh, third layer here, uh, if you wanted to mirror this image, so say, you brought in this image, um, you were doing a backlit print where you're printing the image 
white and then the image again on there. Um, you could do that, but if you needed to mirror this, all you have to do is double click this job. I could mirror it here in Flexi and hit OK. Um, some other rips won't let you do that if you bring in multiple jobs into it. So really simple within Flexi. The other thing I want to point out before I do this is if I wanted to print a bunch of these instead of just one, what I have to actually do is actually put my copies in here first. So if I needed 18 of these, I'm going to hit OK. I've got to come in here, put 18 in here, and 18 on this last one. We want to do this before we combine all these layers because um, once we combine them, we can't put multiple copies. So from here, I'm going to select all of these. I'm holding down the Shift key. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to go on to Create Layer Job. So you can see it's kind of the same process here. I'm not breaking apart the layers. I'm actually creating them at this point. So then you can see I can go over here. What I'm doing is I'm looking to make sure that my first layer is colors front. This is my white layers. And this is my back layers. So one thing that we could do here is we could import the exact same file three times in here. And if the middle one wasn't selected white, I could actually select that, click on white here and change this to um, substrate or under color or one of these, and that'll generate the white for you. But I had a separate layer in there that's white, so I'm gonna hit okay here. And there's my job. If I double click on it, you can see all my layers right there and I can hit print from there and send this over. I can come in here and look at my different layers and see how this is going. One thing that I do want to point out here is uh, depending on the, the printer that you have, sometimes this preview may be um, a, a little bit misleading. So on this HP printer, you can see that it says colors front here, and that image is actually at the top. So in my mind, colors front would be on the bottom layer. So sometimes this preview, depending on the printer you have, may be backwards on here. So that is all the different ways to create white and work with them in Flexi. Does any, has anybody posted any questions, Bobby? Uh, most of them I've either asked you or uh, I've answered online as well. So I haven't seen any new ones come in. So does anybody else have any other questions that uh, we haven't addressed yet with the white ink or, or want us to go back over something that we've already done? While we're waiting for some questions to come in, I wanted to mention that normally we only have one Flexi webinar a month, but this month, Bobby and Jason are throwing in a bonus one. Um, it'll be on the 27th, and we'll have a link to sign up for this in the follow-up email. But uh, this one will be about direct-to-garment and direct-to-film printing, which is um, something new in Flexi 22 and something pretty cool to, to check out if you're on a subscription um, and you want to try something new in your shop. So, um, yeah, that bonus webinar will be on the 27th. Uh, Jason, explain what the overprint option is again uh, and exactly what that means. Yeah, so that is a good question. Um, let's see. I'm going to do this here. So if we um, go back to my example here, I'm going to paste this. I'm going to weld this. I'm going to call this my, my spot green right here. So this doesn't, I believe it doesn't have an overprint. I'm going to release the overprint on there. Yeah. Why don't you show them what happens when you don't do the overprint on there? Yep. Show, them how, show them how that looks like that with it, with it half on and half off. Yeah. Without the overprint. Yep. So if I go on here and uh, if I go to send this over here, uh, I go man, to the man You got to map the spot color, I think. Yeah. Okay. So now if we send this, if I come over here 
and I go to my white channel, you see how it, it's not putting white underneath that color. So basically what it's doing is if I come back in here now, is by selecting overprint. If I go to overprint and select overprint, what it's really doing is it's telling it to print this color. It's telling it to print this white color. So this whole thing, and it's telling it to print all these colors over the top of this other color. So if I go to print this now, we're not gonna forget to click our, our mapping here. So we've got that. We wanna make sure that we unclick that. We hit send, go to production manager here now. So now if we go to this channel, I've got my entire white there. And then if I add my cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, it's gonna print that over that white. Hopefully that answers that question for you. You can kind of see it in the preview there. It's printing that color over there. So that's a, that's an important step that sometimes gets overlooked. And that's the cool thing about the preview channel is I always like to click that because I, I remember when I had my shop, I'm going to date myself here, but I used to have a Gerber Edge. And so you dealt with overprints all the time and nothing was more frustrating than sending something over and it was always on translucent vinyl or static clean, something that was expensive and you forgot one little button on there like overprint and it didn't print like you wanted to. So then you have to go back, figure out what you did wrong and then send it over there. So this preview channel, I love this. Just super helpful to make sure that what you're sending to the printer is actually what you want to print. Uh and well, and then also, Jason, the when you use the underbase, I don't think you had to use the overprint when you did the underbase. Is that correct? Correct. So um, when you come in here, the nice thing about doing the um, the underbase is it applies it for you. So um, I believe if I go here, overprint. So right now, if I go to overprint, this doesn't have an overprint on it. But when I go to effects and underbase, go to solid underbase and hit apply on there. If I go to select within and select uh, an image here and right click on it, you can see uh, it's selecting everything. So, But it applies the overprint to it just by doing the underbase. So that underbase is super cool. Um, I've never used that before and it makes it super easy to do all this. All right. So somebody online is asking there, they've been doing the sandwich mode on their 700 W and uh, they're setting it up just like you did. And it will print the first layer and then the white. And then they're saying the third layer, uh, it would print different colors than the original file. Any ideas what may be going on there? Um, it prints different colors. I believe, um, I believe that might've been, I have seen that before. Um, I, 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 I'm going to have to refer you to our tech support guys on that. If you leave your contact information, if you message that to Bobby, I can have one of my tech guys reach out to you. Um, I know enough tech to get myself in trouble more time than not, but, um, I think that if you, um, if you looked at your build number, um, there might be a newer version of the software that will address that, or there might be a patch that will fix that. But if you leave your contact information, if you get that to Bobby, we'll reach out to you on that one. There are a couple of our tech guys on there. If you guys have uh, any comment on that too, you can type that in there. Any other questions, Bobby? Uh, not right now. Um, I, I don't see anybody typing anything in right now. So, uh, looks like that may have covered just about everything. Yeah. And if you do come up with a question after we end today, you can always add it to the recording of the video on our YouTube channel and we'll either be able to answer the question there or refer you to a place where you can find the answer. But yeah, I'm not seeing anything else come in. So I guess we'll just go ahead and close it out for today. Thanks you guys for answering those questions. 
Just right. a reminder, we have that additional bonus webinar this month on the 27th for direct to garment and direct to film printing, which you'll get the sign up for that later today. Uh, and then we're back to the one month uh, webinars, which is for October, that'll be using Flexi for small desktop UV printers, which is a different application for, for Flexi. And that'll be interesting to learn about. That one's on October 4th. Uh, and we'll also have the link to sign up for that in the email you see, you'll receive later today. Make sure you're subscribed to our newsletter so you won't miss out on webinars or other announcements. You can sign up for that on our website. Thank you again for attending. We hope you learned something and we'll see you next time.